Hello everyone, Michael F. Full Sail here. Welcome to my second student log. Today, I'm going to be reflecting on my past month in the current class that I've been taking, prototyping. To do that, I'm going to answer a few questions. But before I answer those questions, let me show you what I've been working on over the past month if you haven't seen it already. Alright, so here is the actual finished product of what we have. And um, it's basically just a prototype for um, Dark Souls 3. Um, but overall, we have, uh, we have the game, we have the game loop, we have um, an enemy. I mean, we could potentially put in more enemies, but um, he's a prefab, so we can drag in as many as we want. Uh, we have um, patrols, so we can set them up to walk to wherever they want. And they actually aggro to the players, so um, yeah, we would be able to put down a bunch of enemies if we wanted to. Um, we have a UI um, for the controls and for the inventory. Um, no functioning inventory, but um, you know, it looks pretty. So, you know, you got your shield, your sword, and your flask, which heals you. Uh, let me go ahead and show you the, uh, the attacking. See, we take damage. Ooh. Psych. Oh, nope. And we deal damage. We can heal ourselves. We can roll out of the way. We can run. We can collect some souls. And then let's go ahead and fight the big boss. And so the level layout here was made by Will. And um, I think it's looking pretty cool for, you know, uh, block out and all that. Um, and I'd love to see what it would look like, you know, if we were actually to really flesh this out and put materials and, and all that good stuff, um, and assets where they need to go. So that would be really cool, but let me go ahead and start the boss fight. Got a little bit of boss music. I have it turned down a little bit, but I don't know if you can hear it, but we have the music here. Got ourselves a nice little boss fight and a block. Dodge. Oh, didn't manage my stamina there. He's gonna go ahead and do a special attack where he shoots projectiles. And that was worked on by me. The animation, the shooting, uh, the projectiles, all that. I worked on that. Good stuff. And it just looks really cool, I think. You know, if I do say so myself, not to. Not to flatter myself, but... Ouch. Sorry, I just wanted to play it like a real game, see what it looked like, but... You know, you got boss defeated, and we got our credits. And it's, uh, that's, that's what we have. That's what we had the whole month to work on, and... Uh, I think it's just really good what we have, honestly. And I'm proud of what we did. So what I initially expected from the prototyping class was this was the start of our capstone project. And if you don't know what capstone is, capstone is the final project students will be required to complete before graduation. Just like in prototyping, students will have to form a team with other game design students. But unlike in prototyping, uh, students will have to make their own game from the ground up in their own creative direction. So instead of recreating Dark Souls 3, we'd be using that as a reference and taking it in a completely different direction. As it turns out, prototyping is a prerequisite to Capstone. Sort of like getting accustomed to making a prototype for your game mechanics in a team setting. Nonetheless, I expected to be working on a team in a game engine of my team's choice to make a game prototype. So I did expect this from the class and um, I'd say the class met my expectations. So I'd say my biggest takeaway from this course is the fact that this is something that I can do. I've been in school for you know about two years now, almost three, I almost graduate, and as someone who knew nothing about coding, nothing about Unity, and someone who kind of shied away from this path, you know, because of an uncertainty and because I absolutely hate math, um, you know, what I've come to realize is that 
this is something that I can do, and I'm really proud about that. Of course, I wasn't alone in this class. You know, I had my team who contributed a lot to the project. Um, if it weren't for them, I can't say how well this project would have turned out. But that just makes it even more awesome to know that I have that experience. If I were to apply to a big company or even a small company, um, you know, like a small indie studio, I have the experience of working on a team to make sure that, you know, we're assigning tasks, that we're working on high priority things, you know, that we're working with other people, helping them get things done. You know, if they need help with a task, I can jump over there, see if we can troubleshoot together and, you know, test bugs and everything. It's something that I can do. And also not to mention the uh, required readings that we took for the class that reminded us about uh, game design pillars, uh, user stories, and core mechanics for video games. So, um, so just basically soaking up a wealth of knowledge that we already have and applying it to the project that we did this month. So I did come into this class expecting some things to be a little bit different, but it really wasn't too bad. Um, in the beginning, I had a team lineup of like the perfect team composition. I had another student that I was talking to and my old previous teammates um, that I worked with before. Um, so when we got into this class, uh, we figured out that we weren't able to work together because we were in different sections. So you have your campus students, you have your online students, the campus students have their own section and the online students have two sections, sections one and two. And um, one of the team members that I was talking to was on the was in section one and then everybody else was in section two. So that was a little bit of an unfortunate uh, dynamic there, um, you know, caught us off guard. So by the end, we ended up, you know, with more people than we initially intended. We were thinking a team of at least, you know, four to five people. Um, we ended up with a team of six. Um, the max cap is seven. So at first I was going to get everybody in Discord before the class started, that way we can, you know, get ahead of the game. Um, but I'm glad we didn't do that because it would have just been even more of a headache after we, we found out that we wouldn't have been able to work together. And if we had came up with any ideas, um, it pro would probably have to be scrapped if anything. Um, also we found out that this wasn't the capstone, this was just um, a prerequisite, so we weren't going to be act working on the actual game that we're going to be working on next month. So if I were to start this class over, I think I'd try to do a better job at managing the Confluence and Jira page that I had set up um, and set specific meeting dates rather than joining in around the same time every day. Um, we had an availability for everybody and we were kind of just like, yeah, we can come in around this time, um, same time tomorrow. Yeah, we'll just do that. So instead of doing that, maybe set specific days like um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, or something like that. Um, that's how we did it in a previous class and it worked out really well for us. So um, it kind of didn't cross my mind to try to do that again this month. I mean, it should have because it's such a good idea. But um, I think I would try to do that, manage our time more. I'll just use that um, same mindset in my next class. I'm happy with the team I got and everything worked out fine. So as I kind of said before, I now have the experience of creating and prototyping game mechanics in a team setting. So not only do I have the skills required to make a prototype for something and get the functionality working, I can do that by myself. Um, I now have the experience as well of talking with my other teammates to see how everything's progressing, to see if I can help them in any way, uh, making tasks to move the game further. And I'm hoping that putting this on my portfolio of work will help really highlight what's needed uh, when it comes to working on a team in the industry. Uh, this experience has also motivated me to start working on my own projects as soon as I can when my degree program is over, which again, I have less than five months, so I, I'm almost there. I am almost there. All right, so that's going to wrap up student log number two. Um, I think I went over everything I wanted to in this video about the prototyping class. Um, 
for the most part, I've learned a lot over the month. Um, I feel like I'm repeating myself when I say that, but um, I have a lot of skills that I can take from this class, put it to my future classes, which I only have a few left. But um, I think I can also uh, show what I, you know, show what I have on my portfolio uh, for anybody who's looking to accept me into the gaming industry or onto any projects that they may have. Um, I'm excited. And again, I'm very happy that I took this class. Um, I will update on my next class, which is game design pre-production. Um, the start of Capstone, the start of making my own game, not my own game, but um, me and my team's own game. But I look forward to that and forward to updating on the progress of that.